Try this example. Remember our goal is to put a dot next to every atom that can participate in resonance. This nitrogen has a pi bond. It also has some lone pairs, but uh, we only need to find one characteristic before we know that something can participate uh, in resonance. Um, so because of the pi bond, we can say this can participate in resonance, or we might say that it falls into the list because of its lone pairs. Here we have a pi bond. Now, this nitrogen um, has a negative charge, which means it has two lone pairs. Again, if you didn't know that, you should make a flashcard that a nitrogen with a negative formal charge has two lone pairs. Well, even just one lone pair would allow you to participate in resonance. Oh, so by the way, when we say that um, atoms with lone pairs can participate in resonance, we mean one or more lone pairs. You only need one lone pair. Maybe I should have made that clear. Atoms with one or more lone pairs. Oh, well now that I think of it, I should have said that about this too. Um, what we, I said here was um, atoms with pi bonds, but I meant atoms with one or more pi bonds. So again, one or more lone pairs, one or more pi bonds, or a carbocation are the main things that can possibly participate in resonance. All right, well, there's no other atoms here that can participate in resonance. I hope you didn't think that this could participate in resonance. Uh, this is bonded to a lot of things, but it doesn't have lone pairs, it doesn't have pi bonds, and it's not a carbocation. Uh, this is not a carbocation either. So we have three atoms total that can participate in resonance. Try this problem. Try to put a dot on every atom that can participate in resonance. This can't, this can't, and this can't either. It has a lone pair, but it's not connected to anybody else who can participate in resonance. So this oxygen does not get a dot. Even though it has a lone pair, it's not bonded to anybody else who can participate in resonance. Same deal for this oxygen. This oxygen is not bonded to anybody else who can participate in resonance, so neither of these get a dot. Um, they're not connected to each other either, so they're only connected to this carbon here. Uh, so they cannot participate in resonance. Now this has a pi bond, it gets a dot, dot, pi bond, dot, pi bond, dot, pi bond, dot. This nitrogen has a pi bond, it gets a dot. This oxygen has a pi bond, it gets a dot. Now this oxygen has a negative charge, it's got lots of lone pairs. I hope you know this oxygen has uh, lots of lone pairs, actually has three, so it gets a dot. So um, what were the atoms that could participate in resonance? This, 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 every atom in this ring, and that's it. So that gives us six, seven, eight, nine. Nine atoms that can participate in resonance. These two can't, because even though they have lone pairs, they're not directly connected to anybody else who satisfies these characteristics. Try this example, try to place dots on the atoms that can participate in resonance. This carbon has a pi bond, so it can. This carbon cannot participate in resonance. It doesn't have any of these characteristics, so no dot here. This carbon has a pi bond. This oxygen has a lone pair, so it can participate in resonance. And here we have our carbocation, so this can participate in resonance. These two don't have any of the characteristics. Again, it's not good enough, remember, to have these characteristics, but you also have to be bonded to something else with these characteristics. Well, these four qualify. So how many atoms here can participate in resonance? Four. We have four dots. And remember again that I said that this characteristic is an atom with less than an octet, but that was just for completeness. In almost all examples that you're going to see in organic chemistry, the only types of atoms with less than an octet that you're going to deal with in terms of resonance are carbocations. You'll see other atoms with less than an octet, but you're not going to be worried about resonance structures for those. So for all intents and purposes, this characteristic is carbocations. So the key things to focus on here are the terms I've underlined. Lone pair, pi bond, carbocation. Carbocation, or lone pair, or pi bond. Those are the characteristics we should be looking for to identify the candidates for resonance. Try this example. Identify with a dot all the atoms that are candidates for resonance. All the atoms in this ring have pi bonds. 
So they're all candidates for residence. This atom does not have any of these characteristics. So this atom cannot participate in resonance. And this atom cannot participate in resonance. And that means this one can't either. This atom should not get a dot. It doesn't get a dot, even though it's a carbocation, because it's not connected to anybody else who can participate in resonance. Remember, it takes two to resonance. Um, you need to have two atoms that have these characteristics bonded to each other before you can get any resonance. So even though this is a carbocation, it's not bonded to anybody else who can participate in resonance, so we should not put a dot on this atom. These are the atoms that can participate in resonance. So notice that um, you're never going to have a dot by itself. You always have to have at least two dots on adjacent atoms. It doesn't ever make sense to put a single dot on a single atom unless there's another dot on an adjacent atom, because it takes two adjacent atoms to have resonance. So the number of atoms that should have dots here are six, each of the atoms in this ring. This has a carbocation, but it's not bonded to anybody else who can participate in resonance, so this is not a candidate for resonance. Identify the candidates for resonance here. Well, using the characteristics that we've learned, this oxygen has a pi bond, so I'll put a dot here. This carbon has a pi bond, so I'll put a dot here. This oxygen has a lone pair, so I'll put a dot here. And this oxygen also has a lone pair, so I'll put a dot on the oxygen. Certainly not on the hydrogen and not on this carbon. So we've got one, two, three, four dots. One thing I should mention is that, again, these are really just the atoms that might possibly be involved in resonance. In certain um, unusual situations, um, even though they have these characteristics, there might not actually be any legal resonance structures or any significant resonance structures that we could draw for those atoms. And that's actually the case here. It turns out that there are no legal resonance structures that involve this oxygen. Even though it satisfies all these characteristics and it's bonded to something else that satisfies the characteristics, uh, it turns out that there are no legal resonance structures uh, for this oxygen uh, over here. There are legal resonance structures that involve this oxygen, this carbon, and this oxygen. It turns out there's no legal resonance structures that involve this oxygen. So again, this is really just a list of candidates for resonance. But this is a kind of unusual situation. We're not going to worry about this too much. Um, usually, if you have an atom that gets a dot because it's in this list and it's connected to something else in this list, usually there will be uh, at least one resonance structure that involves that. So I wanted to mention this for completeness, just so you keep in mind, again, that these are just the atoms that might possibly be candidates for resonance. There are some weird cases where even though they've satisfied these characteristics, they still, there's still no, there are still no legal resonance structures for them. We're not going to worry about that too much, though. That's not going to be an important